starting quarterback for Virginia is Tim Sherman. You see his numbers there. Four touchdown passes, nine interceptions, but John Spagnola, the last two weeks have been a different story for him. Yes, they have. He's thrown for an average of 300 yards a game in the last two weeks, and he seems to finally be running this offense a little more consistently. He did fumble twice last week against Clemson, and that hurt this team both times. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. Edley and Barber. That is Tiki Barber, number 21, out to the 43-yard line. You'll hear that name a lot this afternoon. A look at the Chili's backs and receivers. Tiki Barber is the conference's leading rusher, and he also leads the conference in all-purpose yardage. Running behind this offensive line. That's offensive a 36. line that'll be tested, John. They will. They're a little bit undersized, but they can run block pretty well. Jeremy Raley, who you saw right there, it's his 36th consecutive start. Second down and six for Virginia. Backs out of the offset eye. That's Barber again. This time stopped up right at the line of scrimmage by number 91, Mike Pringley. North Carolina sports the number one scoring defense in the nation. Ellis on the verge of setting a school record. Yeah, he's a half a sack away from the all-time mark set by Marcus Jones last year. And speaking of marks, Dre Bly with nine interceptions. That leads the country. Everything that comes to sticks for some reason or another. Third down and four for Virginia on its opening possession of the ball game. Backs out of the offset eye. It's Medley and Barber. Sherman to pass. Has Jermaine Crowell completed the 42-yard line of North Carolina for first down. A pickup of 15 yards. Robert Williams, number 29, making the tackle. Well, Crowell lines up in the slot. They're going to run this formation a lot today. He's in the slot. They're going to run a lot of two-man patterns against this bump and run. He's able to escape. He's a big, tall receiver. And watch how he's able to use that big frame of his to shield the football so that Williams can't get over and knock it away. That's a key first down for Virginia against this very good Tar Heel defense. Crowell, number 17, right there on your screen, recovering nicely from a dislocated toe injury that he suffered a couple of weeks ago. James Knight, our official, the man wearing the white hat today. It is an all ACC officiating crew headed by James Knight. Panoramic view of Scott Stadium here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're just underway in the first quarter. 13.30 to play. Virginia coming into this game with a record of six and three overall. They are four and three in conference play. They need a win today. Edley and Barber this time operating out of the eye. That's Barber in motion. They give it to the fullback Medley, and he busts one for a first down at the 29-yard line of North Carolina, where Omar Brown makes the tackle, but not before a 12-yard pickup. John Spagnuolo, they changed it up and gave it to the fullback. Yeah, they did, and they put Barber in motion. And if you get a chance to smell, hold it, let Barber go in motion. Watch two players go with Barber in motion. See there, there's one player there. Now there goes another player. So there goes Simmons and another player with him. That takes Simmons out of the middle, and that's how they're able to get the game on that play. This time, John, they give it to Barber, who wrestles his way down to the 26-yard line, where the pile stops him up. Tiki Barber, the 5'10", 195-pound senior. First player in school history to rush for back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons at Virginia. Oh, he's an exceptional back, too. I mean, he blocks well. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He's developed into a great all-round receiver. Clemson shut him down last week, though. He had eight straight games in which he had gained 100 yards, and that was broken last week. Second down and seven now. Two tight end formation and two wide. Single back, and they pass out of their Rand formation. And it's complete down to the 24-yard line. That's the tight end wall. Derry out of Falls Church, Virginia, number 87. A huge target at 6'5", 248 pounds. He's brought down by Greg Williams. And for those of you who aren't familiar with all these formations, Mark is saying the ramp formation, he'll tell you the inside stuff. I'll tell you what it really is. <laughs> two backs, two tight ends, one back, and two wide receivers. Well, you sit in on those meetings too much, Mark. Oh, boy, you love it. You got to love it. Virginia and North Carolina, offense and defense, respectively, something's got to give this afternoon. Yes. Third down and three. Barber in motion again. Last time they gave it to the fullback. This time they pass. Barber, and it's broken up. 
incomplete at the seven yard line. Barber wants pass interference on Omar Brown, number two. Well, he sure does. He had trouble releasing on that play. Omar was bumping him the entire time. And they had him isolated one on one. But when that ball's in the air, Omar Brown's making a play on the football. And that's the part the official called. Tiki was complaining about what had happened earlier when he tried to get outside on that release. There's a look at Barber, the Heisman Trophy candidate on the sidelines as Rafael Garcia comes in to attempt a field goal from 41 yards out. This guy has been accurate, to say the least. He is 16 of 20 on the year. And with that, Garcia sends it right through the pipes. And Virginia jumps out to a 3 to nothing lead early here in the first period. Virginia trying to continue that winning streak at home against North Carolina when we return. Back in Charlottesville, and a look at the rotunda here on the lawn. One of the many immaculate, beautiful buildings here on campus and in the surrounding area. Had a chance earlier this week to go visit Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's house. Virginia with a three to nothing lead over North Carolina, scoring on its opening possession. You know, I think Jefferson would have made a very good offensive coordinator, don't you? I mean, he's a guy who was innovative. He loved to track the weather. You know, every day he woke up and tracked the weather, wrote down the temperature, and today it's 44 degrees. It's a beautiful day for football. Garcia set to kick off, and back deep, it's Leon Johnson, number 12. He's standing on the three-yard line. Keep an eye on the man they call the natural for North Carolina. He's already one run back this year for a touchdown. Johnson lets it bounce into and through the back of the end zone. So North Carolina will start its opening possession on the 20 yard line. And there's a look at the starting quarterback, Chris Keldorf, the transfer. He's a big guy, 6'5, 250 pounds, a junior. 22 touchdown passes this year, just three interceptions. He had one interception last week. That broke a string of 143 passes. He had another one that was intercepted for a touchdown against him by Louisville, and it was called back because of interference on Sam Madison. Louisville shut down this offense a little bit last week, and I think Virginia's going to take a page from that Louisville textbook. Out of the shotgun on first and ten, Keldor out of the backfield to Leon Johnson. And he's brought down at the 20 yard line. Maybe gained one yard. Joe Rowe, the cornerback, making the tackle, number 18 for Virginia. Look at the Chili's backs and receivers. Leon Johnson, number 12. He is number two in the ACC in all purpose yardage behind Barber. Yeah, 161 all purpose yards a game. Jeff Saturday, the center, has been starting. He should be first team all C ACC this year. A very good center has been starting for three years at North Carolina. Second down and nine for the Tar Heels. Three wide receivers. They hand it off to number six. That's Chris Watson going against a very big, strong, aggressive front seven of Virginia. Two linebackers in particular, 42 and 33, guys to watch. That's right. James Farrier is a guy who leads the team in sacks with six. That's the most sacks ever by a linebacker in Virginia. And the twin brother of Tiki Barber, Rondé Barber, who's aggressive defensively. North Carolina wants to try and take advantage of his aggressiveness today. There's a look at the linebacker, James Farrier. Very much underrated. Four wide receivers for Keldorf on this play. And it is noisy, folks. Third down. And it's ruled incomplete at the 30-yard line, intended for the big target, L.C. Stevens, covered closely by Joe Rowe. So North Carolina will have to punt. Keldorf looking a little bit uncertain that time, John, in the pocket. Yes, he did. Well, you know, he buys a little extra time. That looks like Joe Rowe's going off with a limp right now. That will certainly hurt the secondary for Virginia. But L.C. Stevens should have had that football. It was thrown safely low and away. He came back to the football, but he didn't make the catch. Derek DePriest, number 33, punting to that man. Tiki Barber, number 21. Barber standing at his own 35-yard line. Barber had problems last week against Clemson. He fumbled one deep in his own territory. This time, he catches it at the 38. And Barber takes it out to the 42-yard line, where he's brought down. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. 
Well, Mark will be roaming the sidelines for you and keeping you apprised of all the on-the-field on stories. Also, we'll have these stories for you. Mac will heal UNC. Coach Brown's preseason questions have been answered. Turn, turn, turn. Not the bird song. Showing my age there, but unbelievable turnover statistics for Carolina. The Everything Man, a story about Virginia right guard Jeremy Raley and defensive cavalier attitudes about an unorthodox yet effective system under defensive coordinator Rick Lance. Mark. Yeah, it's been working, Dean. Right now, Virginia on offense, and that is number 21, Tiki Barber, out to the 48-yard line. Barber running nicely between the tackles, gaining about six yards on first down. Tackled by number 96, Russell Davis. You get the impression so far, even though the Tar Heels are ranked number three in the nation against the rush, Virginia does not respect those statistics so far. They're going to try them, and they're going to prove to themselves that they can run the football against the Tar Heels. Second down and five. Two tights and two wides. Barber the single back. And it's Barber cutting back, and this time stuffed up right at the line of scrimmage. About four yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up. The tackle made by Kay Mays, number 53. Now this is a situation that Carolina likes. They've been able to stop them on second down, and now they get a shot, turn loose those big men up front, Greg Ellis and company, to try and sack Tim Sherman. Number 53 for Carolina is one of them. That's Mays, all ACC a year ago. He calls the signals for them. It's third down and four. Backs out of the offset eye. That's Crowell in motion to the top of your screen. Sherman to pass. Crowell again. And he drops it and he picks it up before two of his bounce. And it ends up at the 27 yard line and a first down for the Cavaliers. A 22 yard pickup. John Spagnola, albeit a little unorthodox with the bounce. <laughs> it, it was. And, and look at the beginning of the play. You can see where Crowell's coming in motion. He just hesitates. See, they want to use this man to man coverage against North Carolina. And that's where they get to see how he's able to pick himself off that receiver clearing. That's what this offense is, is deciding to do. Crowell certainly is playing well so far in this football game today. And he's a guy who's averaged 100 yards of reception in his last four games. And look at that. All 27 receptions have resulted in a first down, at least, for Crowell. Or a touchdown. So he either moves the chains or he moves the scoreboard. Medley that time, running for a couple of yards, stopped by Russell Davis. 8-10 remaining in the first quarter. Virginia with the ball with a 3-0 lead on the board. It's second down and seven. Crowell and Brian Owen split to the bottom of your screen. The backs out of the eye. Barber up the middle, across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Tiki Barber has rushed for 100 or more yards in 12 of the last 14 regular season games. That is proficiency. Today, he has run six times for a total of 16 yards. You know, and he, it's not like he gets the yards against Patsy teams. Three years in a row, he's had 100 plus yards against Florida State. That, to me, shows that he's a great running back. John, third down and six. They come with two receivers to the right of Sherman. Crowell and Owen, respectively, inside to the outside. Carolina blitzing, it's Barber running it, and he won't get the first down. Actually, he's tackled for a loss back at the 28-yard line. Dre Bly, number 31, made the stop. That's just a great defensive stand by the Tar Heels. They came in, they played a zone behind what they're doing defensively, and they just, they actually seemed like they were playing the run the whole time. Last week, they held Louisville to one yard rushing in that football game. It was a hard-fought game, too. And Louisville, no slouch. Garcia in to attempt his second field goal of the ball game. This one coming from 46 yards out. And this one is no good. Wide to the right. Garcia, a Lou Groza candidate, missing. And it remains 3 to nothing. We'll be right back. Look high above Scott Stadium. Near sellout crowd on hand as we are nestled in amongst the Blue Ridge Mountains. John, some of the pristine and bucolic scenes around here are breathtaking. Yeah, and it's very pretty too, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you Yale guys. <laughs> <laughs> Three nothing. Chris Keldorf in for his second series of the ball game. North Carolina had to punt it away on the first one, and this is Leon Johnson with a hard-earned three yards on first down. It really hurts them. Second down and six. Keldorf complete to Octavius Barnes, who's brought down necktied at the 40-yard line by Rondi Barber. Barnes is an interesting story for North Carolina. He is recovering, has been recovering all year from a knee injury that he suffered in a bowl game last year, and he's slowly starting to come around now, John. Yeah, he is. You know, it's hard for him because coming into the season, he had caught more passes than everybody other receiver on this team combined, and now he has to take a back seat to L.C. Stevens and Nay Brown, who are playing so well this year, but he's coming on in this part of the season. On first and ten, Leon Johnson up the middle, gaining about six yards. Johnson, number 12, the 6'1", 210-pound senior. Second in the ACC in career touchdowns and all-purpose yardage. A few credit hours short from graduating. They call him the natural. And he gained seven yards on first down. It's second down and three from the 48-yard line of North Carolina. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. The Tar Heels trail Virginia three to nothing. Keldorf brought down for a loss of one with the sack. Number 89, Tony Dingle, the 6'3 sophomore, 282 pounds, in on the sack. Tell you what, this is a classic case of a covered sack. Now, unlike North Carolina, Virginia relies primarily on a zone. They're a ball hawking defense. Watch the players drop back in their zone defenses, and everybody. The Keldorf's trying to go to his cover. He's a smart guy. He'll take the sack. He does not force the football. He has a good defense, and he's happy to punt the football, but he'll never try and turn it over. He's only thrown three interceptions all year. Third down and four for the Tar Heels. Keldorf sacked the second time. Back at the 40 by Jamie Sharper, number 33. Sharper cutting like a knife on that play. The team's leading tackler forcing North Carolina to punt. Well, Sharper comes right on the outside, gets picked up, and then throws the fullback out of the way. What tenacity by Sharper. He threw Chris Watson right out of the way, and Watson's a big, tough fullback. That surprises me that he was able to run him over like that. John Sharper set a new Virginia school record with his 33rd career sack. DePreece punting for the second time. Barber at the 10. He's got a wall. He got a good block. And Barber with a nice return out to the 31-yard line. He brings it back 22 yards the other way after that 51-yard punt. Ebenezer Ekubon in on the tackle. And in Charlottesville, all is well. They lead 3 to nothing. Kirby and Barber working out of the offset eye. That's Tiki Barber on first and 10 out to the 32-yard line. Barber last week rushed for just 82 yards against Clemson. That's the first time all season that he's rushed for less than 100 yards. That's Tiki, T-I-A-I, -I, or, well, you pronounce it, John. And Rondi, his Tiki brother. Yambu. Jamal Rondi, come on. Buy a vowel for 250 bucks. By the way, Rondi is seven minutes older than his <laughs> twin brother. And on that birthday note, happy birthday, Mark Jones. Oh, thank you very much. You're so kind. Second down and eight, and it's Barber again out to the 26-yard line. Kay Mays and Brian Simmons, number 41, in on the tackle for North Carolina. You get the feeling that Tar Heels have settled in a little bit defensively. I think that Virginia had them on their heels a little bit early with the mixture of running the football and passing it. Now they're getting into situations of third and five like they are now or greater where they can dictate things defensively. John Virginia has pretty much dominated the time of possession here in the first quarter. Third down and five. Crowell split to the close side of the field, the near side of the field. He's number 17. And it's Crowell, the intended target, but it's incomplete. Number 29, Robert Williams in on the coverage. And Virginia will have to punt. Robert Williams, 5'11", sophomore, doing a good job that time. 
Yeah, that was excellent coverage by Robert Williams. I mean, Crowell tried to put an out move on him, could not do it, could not shake himself free. And Sherman basically threw the football away. Will Bryce, who has had some of his better games against North Carolina, gets off a nice punt here. Johnson back of the 19. And Johnson has a block. He took it inside as opposed to outside and is brought down at the 32-yard line. A 45-yard punt, 13 on the return. Medley making the tackle and a look at the mastery of Virginia over North Carolina of late, especially here. Going back to 1981, that's the last time the Tar Heels won here. But, you know, you talk to the Tar Heel coaches, Mac Brown and company, they say, you know, we just both, most of the time here, we didn't have a good enough football team to win. It's that plain, it's that simple. Today, they feel they have a good enough team to win. This can be a very tough place to play. Those fans that we saw moments ago eschewing the ties. I don't know how much the ties have to do with it, but I know they can get after it here. Florida State, Danny Cannell last year when they were upset said it was a very difficult environment in which to play. Watson that time getting back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10 to go. Look at the near sellout crowd here at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville. A game that has been highly anticipated, hotly debated for a number of weeks. These two teams recruit basically from the same player base, the same area, same region. Keldorf, the flanker screen to Freddie Jones, the tight end that time, out over the 40 to the 41-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down, brought down by Shannon Taylor, number nine. You like Freddie Jones, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's interesting there. He's a guy who now has broken the tight end reception record here at North Carolina. Watch him line up. Usually when you run a pattern, you go this way. He goes this way and catches this ball. An interesting little mix. Look, it's a zone defense. There's plenty of cushion there. Why not take that kind of play? That's when that simple formation can give you a nice play. Under a minute to play in the first period. Third and short. Johnson puts his hat down, and it's going to be close. Leon Johnson got out near the 42-yard line, depending on the spot. He may or may not have the first down. Jamie Sharper, number 33, and Dwayne Ashman, number 94, made the tackle for the Cavaliers. And they're going to bring in the chains to measure. Mark, you talked about everything at stake here today. North Carolina sixth in the nation. They have an at-large bid alliance bid. And, of course, if they win this game and win next week in Duke, which in all probability they will do. It's their highest ranking okay, since 1983 when they were third. Mac Brown talked a lot about recruiting and being a top 10 football team. And boy, there's just a whisker there. Now, John, if you're Mac Brown at this juncture of the game, if, do you go for it or not? Not with this defense, I don't. And, and I think that's the thing that uh, separates good coaches like Mac Brown and me. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Brown electing to go for it. On fourth down and about two inches to go. 29 seconds to play in the first period, and Virginia leads at three to nothing. My thought is you punt the football, you have a great defense, you've shut down Virginia in the last two drives. Mac Brown obviously is thinking he has a great defense, and he's happy to play defense on his side of the football. Dean Blevins has more from downstairs. Dean? Well, I just want to argue with Spags up there. I mean, we've got a quarterback who's 6'5". He's big and strong. It's a pretty good offensive line. Roll the dice, Spags. He can get a foot. He's 6'5", as you mentioned, Dean. 250. <laughs> Dean, there's been six coaches fired so far in college football, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Keldor does it himself. There's a flag down, though. Let's wait and see. Keldor appears to have gotten the first down. But we'll have to wait and see. What happens with the flag as they unstack the pile of humanity? Keldorf signaling first down. I'm not sure he saw the flag on the near side of the field. It's against Virginia, so it's a mute point. Good call by Mac Brown, I guess. Both today, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One has teamed up with ABC to provide an aerial view of the University of Virginia. The MetLife Blimp is constantly on the road, logging over 60,000 miles a year. John, that's about as much as you and I during a college football <laughs> season, right? That's right. Some great views up there today. We are in Monticello, and what a fabulous vista we had. Didn't we from all over, panoramic view? 
What a great countryside this is. Four of Thomas Jefferson's grandkids attended the University of Virginia. Five seconds to play in the period. First and ten. Kelgo fumbles. And Carolina gets a lucky bounce, and they recover it. A very tenuous way to end the first 15 minutes of play for the number six ranked Carolina Tar Heels. Freddie Jones pounced on the loose ball. It's three to nothing Virginia when we come back. Jamie Sharper is really getting after it so far today. He had a sack from the right side. He comes in from the left side. Even though he misses Keldorf, he recovers, knocks the football lo loose. And fortunately, an alert, alert Freddie Jones jumps on the football. But right now, they're moving Jamie Sharper around defensively, and he's making his presence felt in the pass rush. Rick Lenz, the defensive coordinator, calls number 33 Tweedle D. He calls number 42 Tweedle Dumb. Not the outspoken type. Keldorf. Incomplete, almost picked off. L.C. Stevens juggled it, had it in his hands, but couldn't squeeze. That's the second one L.C. had a shot at today that he didn't come up with. James Ferrier, number 42, was in on the coverage and was one of the guys in the vicinity to make the hit. I'll tell you, so far, Virginia is having its way in this football game. 73 total yards. They're a balanced team. They have been all year. They average 196 yards passing and running, and they have 73 to 19 today, and they've outgained. North Carolina so Virginia's playing solid football so far in this game John Carolina has trailed after the first quarter just one other time this year that was last week against Louisville third and 15 Keldor sacked the fourth time he's been down today by Sharper number 33 this Virginia defense turning it, turning it up a notch in intensity well, Jamie Sharper is going to come from the left side here, number 33. They've moved him around throughout the day. Now he's working on the right guard. Mike Hobgood swims around him, gets right to the quarterback. That's the third sack he's had in this football game today. Set to punt is Derek DePriest. And Barber calling for the fair catch at the 23-yard line. Dean Levins, that Virginia defense playing like it has something to prove. Well, Mark, you know, we talked about the defensive Cavalier attitude off the top as one of the stories, and that's what they've been, Cavalier, really, in their approach. Rick Lance does a terrific job with this defense. He does something that I haven't really seen a lot of, and he listens to his players come off the field, and they, they suggest to him what type of defense they would like to run. And he says many times he runs that. He wants them to be comfortable in the defense, or he says more times than not they're successful. Now, he will signal the play into 42 James Ferrier, and we'll, we'll talk about this as plays develop when they go back on defense, but they do a very good job defensively under Lance. All right, Dean, and here's Tiki Barber offensively for Virginia out to the 35-yard line. An 11-yard pickup, Greg Williams, number three, pushing Barber out of bounds. Barber, good size and strength. Has that nice body lean that the pros like so much, too. He does, and he's filled out over the years here, and that's why I think he's become an exceptional pro prospect. Then rushes for 28 yards, enough to keep this defense off balance. Got a first down on that rush, though. But I like him. And what's interesting is they have another running back, Thomas Jones, who's just a freshman, who's in the exact same physical mold as Tiki Barber. The heir apparent. First down and 10. Two tight end formation. Sherman going up top for Crowell, and he has him, but it's batted away at the last moment. Number 29, Robert Williams, leads the team in pass breakups. Illustration Exhibit A. Yeah, that is his 17th pass broken up this year. It's a record for this football team. They have one corner who intercepts him. That's Dre Bly, and then Robert Williams, with good recovery speed, he stays close, he stays near, he positions his feet exceptionally well to be able to slip inside and bat that ball away. Williams, John, not a small guy at 5'11", but you saw the obvious size differential between him and Crowa. Yeah, but you saw the leaping ability of Williams, too, and that's what made that play. Crowa at 6'4", it's second down and 10 for the Cavaliers. Barber trying to bounce it outside, and he fumbles it. Carolina got the ball. North Carolina will have possession at Virginia's 30-yard line. Bonnie Holiday made the hit, and number 94, Rick Terry, made the fumble recovery. 
I think this is what happened. It's Tre watch Trevor Burton right here. He gets knocked into Tiki Barber as he runs this play. The pulling guard comes around. Now he gets pushed into Tiki, and that's what dislodges the football. At least that disrupts him a little bit. And then the, and then the ball comes out. So that pressure by the defense, it looks like Bonnie Holiday is actually who knocked it out, but certainly Trevor Burton pulling on that play is what disrupted things. You talk about North Carolina's turnover margin. Number one in the nation. And look at those numbers. They forced 30 turnovers. Watson and Johnson out of the eye. First and 10. An opportunity for North Carolina. But that swarming Cavalier defense stuffs the run at the 31-yard line by Johnson. Jamie Sharper, again, number 33. I'll tell you an interesting story about Sharper. He's the team's top tackler. And earlier this week, defensive coordinator Rick Lenz gave Sharper and Ferrier an article that was written that said that the North Carolina linebackers were the best, perhaps, in the nation. He wanted to make sure that his players knew how some people out there felt. A little fuel for motivation. On second down and 11 now, Keldorf to Johnson. Johnson tackled at the 25-yard line by James Ferrier, the other half, of the bookend linebackers, number 42. Barrier, 6'2", 229, a senior. Tied for the team lead with six sacks coming into the game. 12.54 to play now in the first half. A huge discrepancy, John, in the rushing yards. Minus six for North Carolina. They don't run the ball as much as they used to around here. But it shows the dominance of that Virginia defense so far. Third down and five. Barnes in motion. And it's incomplete. Octavius Barnes hit immediately, and it's ruled incomplete. Again, number 33 on the loose. Jamie Sharper made the hit. Watch Jamie Sharper. I mean, we see him rushing to pass, and we see him running down running back. Let's watch him play pass defense. Gets the defense in the right set. See, there's Octavius Barnes working on him, comes in. Comes back out, he drives the football and knocks the thing loose. It hits on the ground, and Rondé Barber picks it up. A lot of people thought he had caught that ball in the air. In to attempt a field goal now. From 42 yards out, trying to tie the game, is Josh McGee. Just 6 of 13 on the year, out of the hold of Derek DePriest. No problem. Now 7 of 14 on the air. He's batting 500, and this game is knotted at three apiece. We'll be right back. Dean Blevins, Rick Lenz has a democratic defensive system, huh? Well, he does, and, uh, you know, they have played extremely well, but one thing Rick Lance knows is what every other coach in America knows, and it's turnovers kill you. You know, other than pure physical talent, turnovers remain the most critical issue in a football game. No surprise, Carolina's ranked sixth. Take a look at these startling numbers. In 1995, this group forced 13 turnovers. They committed 31, a net minus uh, 18. This season, up to the minute now, they have forced 30 turnovers, only committed nine. That's a plus 21. That's a net difference the last two years of 39 turnovers. And uh, John Spagnola, you know what that means. That means a lot of points. It sure does. And they picked up 100 places. They were 101st in the country in turnover margin. They're first this year. That'll get you that 8-1 record, Dean. Yeah, coaches always like to point to that as the acid test of how successful a team is. Brian Schmitz with the kickoff. And back at the 7-yard line, it's Wilkins. Terrence Wilkins upended hard at the 29-yard line. Number 82. Bumpler making the tackle for North Carolina. 12-22 to play in the first half. We're tied at three. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. And this is a very meaningful game for a couple of teams with respect to the bowl picture. North Carolina coming in looking for one of the at-large Alliance Bowl bids. Virginia, already with his sixth win, looking for its seventh. Out of the backfield, complete to Barber. 
You don't want him loose in the open field. He's pushed out of bounds by Kay Mays, and Sherman threw a bullet to Barber complete for the first down in 11 yards. And he threw that ball much better than he did last week. Last week he had chances to throw to the right, and the ball was coming up short. We talked about that. He had problems with his delivery. Watch how he closes his shoulders here, steps and throws the football. So that he hits Barber right in stride. It's like a handoff. You get the ball to a running back in a swing pattern like that, hit him in the stomach, and he's going to get 10 yards. You throw it behind him, he's going to get tackled for maybe no gain. Look at the stoic George Welsh on the sidelines. Barber in motion on first and 10. They give it to the fullback, and he is rocked. Daryl Medley got rocked by Rick Terry, number 94. The sack leader last year for the Tar Heel defense. A guy who won awards for conditioning and strength in the offseason. A great physical specimen at 6'4", 295. Second in the team in tackles for losses, too. So, you know, this defense likes to penetrate. They like to let those guys up front turn it loose, and they can do it because they have very good cover corners, and that was a question mark going into this season. You see so much of that now in college football, that pressure style defensively. Second and 12. They run the flanker screen. Wilkins still on his feet. Terrence Wilkins fumbles it and is ruled down now at the 45. Terrence Wilkins picks up 17 yards for the first down. Omar Brown in on the tackle. Terrence Wilkins, remember, is a former running back. There's only one true receiver. He lines up here, and they use his running back abilities to set up this screen pass, knowing that with a block, and him and getting the football to him, he can run in traffic like that because running backs are used to that kind of thing. He does an excellent job of catching the football and weaving his way through for a first down. He's a guy who welcomed the position change, knowing that Tiki Barber would get most of the carries at the running back position. And he gets another one right here. Barber between the tackles down to the 43-yard line, picking up about two. Sherman, an accurate four of seven so far today, John Spagnola. Yes, he is. I mean, uh, he's a guy, he has trouble throwing to his right. Uh, you saw that pass to Wilkins, it was good to the left. But to the right, he has a tendency to keep that shoulder a little open and has difficulty because he's just arming the football out. See how he's just armed that thing out? He closes the shoulder, he's much more accurate to the right. He told me he worked on that all week long after that Clemson game. Second down and eight. This time throwing to his left, and Coral got rocked. Who? He got hit by Dre Bly. And it's surprising that Koa got up. He's on his feet. Well, that's a big hit. Dre Bly came off his coverage and helped out against Crowell, hit that ball, and it popped right out. Crowell has to be hurting from that. He didn't rub it, though. That's the secret. You get hit that hard. That ball was almost held long enough to be a completion, too. Third down and eight now for the Cavaliers at North Carolina's 44. Sherman passing to his right this time. Incomplete. Intended for Brian Owen, number 29. Robert Williams in on the coverage. I mean, that Robert Williams does a nice job of understanding down the distance. He's lined up here. There's the yard marker. He knows where Virginia has to go for a first down. Watch him. Just set. He comes out of that back pedal faster than Owen came out of his break in the pattern. I mean, that's just very good, smart defense, understanding where you are on the football field. Will Bryce has 14 punts inside the 20. Hangs this one up. And unfortunately for Virginia, it carries into the end zone. A velocity, too. He uncoils that upper uh, body, and that's what allows him to throw better to his right. Did a nice job in this game today so far. Mechanics so important. Leon Johnson lowering his shoulder, barely getting over the 20. Sherman, 5 of 10, 69 yards. So he continues to improve, as we mentioned, during the last three games. Keldorf has only passed seven times for 24 yards. And he's content, Keldorf has to throw the ball underneath and not try to force anything too soon. But with this aggressive secondary for Virginia, I can expect at some point in the right field position, the Tar Heels are going to go up top. Second down and nine. They go underneath. That's L.C. Stevens. Stevens brought down to the 37-yard line, getting the first down. 16 yards on the gain. Rondé Barber making the tackle. 
Stevens, a big target at 6'5", 213 pounds, a sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina. Has six touchdown passes, pardon me, receptions coming into the game. And he was an unknown factor coming into the season. We saw him in the opener against Clemson. He caught a couple touchdown passes in that game, and he's been playing great football for this team ever since. First and 10, nose of the ball, the 37-yard line of Virginia. Quick three-step drop, Stevens again squeezes it and squeezes his way near midfield and another first down for the Tar Heels. A 13-yard pickup, Barrier making the tackle for the Cavaliers. Boy, when you have a guy as big as number five right there, it's nice to just step back and fire away. It sure is, but also Sam McKeever is now in a quarterback. Here's L.C. Stevens, two for 29. It looks to me like Joe Rowe went off the football field. Rondé Barber is the corner on the other side of the field. And McKeever has had to step in now. He's only 5'8", 186. So they may be matching up their taller receivers against him. We'll see if they pick on him. Keldorf. Stevens went to the post and it's picked off. Phelan. And Phelan is brought down at the 20-yard line. Keldorf threw it deep. Stevens broke to the post. And you saw the result. Phelan, number 49, with the pick. Virginia now has picked off a pass in 39, count them, 39 consecutive ball games. It's an incredible record. We talked to Rick Lance about it. He said, we play a zone defense. We watch the quarterback's eyes. Watch the bump that McKeer gets here on LC. That sets him off a little bit. He tries to break it inside. Now Phelan is just off and on his way to catch that football. And they pride themselves in making the catch when they have an opportunity for an interception. Phelan's running skills could use a little work. <laughs> now we know why he's not a running back. Southern and Barber out of the eye. Barber in motion. Sherman throws to his left. And it was batted down. Chris Keldorf communicating with his receiving core. They got to get straight. Well, it's a question of what coverage they saw. I believe it was a two deep zone. L.C. Stevens saw something else, and he wound up breaking his pattern off a little bit. Keldorf, on the other hand, threw it downfield. And that quarterback communication with wide receivers is so important, but that's only the fourth time Keldorf's been picked off all season, Mark. Second down and 10, the toss to Tiki Barber. Brought down at the 24-yard line. Tough running today for both Barber and Leon Johnson of North Carolina. Nothing coming easily. Came Mays making the tackle that time. You know, one thing about Chris Keldorf, though, he's unflappable. He kind of brings a West Coast attitude to this West Coast offense. He said, we can go three and out, five series in a row. I don't care. He said, I have reliance on my defense. I've got a good offensive team. I'm not going to force the football and make mistakes. And another thing about him, John, is that Keldorf often deflects the criticism away from his teammates and puts it on himself. 8-16 to play in the first half, third down and six. Barber tripped up nicely at the 24 by Vonnie Holiday, number 90, who caused a fumble. Leon Johnson back at the 30 and brought down at the 35-yard line. A seven-yard return, 47-yard punt. Dwayne Stukes making the tackle. A lot to yell about. It's 3-3 when we come back. 92 yards rushing, two TDs, five receptions for 48 yards, and he threw that 19-yarder. And this is a guy who's been doing it ever since his true freshman year at Chapel Hill. Look at his numbers. 54, 49 career all-purpose yards. That's incredible. They're going to have a gaping hole to fill when he graduates next year. First and 10, 7.23 remaining in the first half. And there he is, Leon Johnson, out near the 40-yard line, stopped at the 39. They've got to get to the 45 for the first down. Scratch that Linton on the carry that time. Linton moved to tailback after starting the season at the fullback position. Game four, it's now second down and six. Stevens split to the short side of the field. Watson and Linton working out of the eye. It's Linton. Johnson getting a well-deserved breather as Linton runs out to the 41, about four yards short of the first down. It'll be third down and four. Linton with a little more size, John. It's 245 pounds. 
Yes, he is. He came over from fullback, as you said. And Maurice McGregor, Jr., moved from tailback to fullback. He felt they'd get more production out of both players if they switched them in those positions. So Linton now checks out of the game, and Johnson checks back in. Third down and four. Johnson and Watson in the backfield with Keldor. Intended for Johnson, and it's knocked away nicely by James Ferrier, number 42. And North Carolina will have to punt. So the Virginia linebacking tandem of Sharper and Ferrier, Ferrier number 42 that time, knocking it away. Yeah, Johnson comes out on a little option route. He works on Ferrier, the linebacker who's in here. And, and, and you know, Ferrier picks him up, waits for him and does a great job of going over the outside shoulder and batting that ball away. That's great linebacker play, one-on-one -on, -one on a very elusive running back. Here's DePriest, the former baseball player. A lot of pressure. It may have been tipped. Not sure. It may have been tipped. Nonetheless, Virginia will have auspicious field position at the 42-yard line, just an 18-yard punt by DePriest. He may have whiffed it. It was shanked, but the pressure is what caused him to hit that football off the side. Out of the eye. And they run it on first and 10 out to the 44-yard line that time. That's Jones, the freshman that we were talking about, the heir apparent to Barber. Just as quick, but maybe not as fast in the long run. That's him, number six, 5'10", 185 pounds. Only a freshman with a load of talent. Yeah, another nice freshman, though, too, in that Alabama game. Sean Alexander came on and broke the single-game record there at Alabama. He's quite a running back that Gene Stallings is finally turning loose. Sherman rolling to his right, completing the pass to Brian Owen, the former walk-on with the reception. A 14-yard pickup. Now, Brian Owen, I talked about Jermaine Crowell being the only true receiver. Brian... Owen came in as a kicker, a walk-on kicker, believe it or not. Good job getting his feet down. He ran a 4 6 40. They knew he had some athletic ability, and uh, he's done a fine job for him. That's his 18th reception of the year. Tim Sherman is 6 for 12. Tim Sherman firing well that time, completing it to the right. Maybe he saw your tip, John Spagnola. 5.20 remaining in the first half. They run it out to the 40-yard line. That was number 36, Charles Kirby. James Hamilton making the tackle. Keep in mind that the last three top ten teams that have come into Charlottesville and Scott Stadium have not fared well. So it's no surprise that number six ranked North Carolina is having a tough time here in the first half. That's exactly right. They beat Florida State in that big one last year in 95 and beat number nine Clemson at the top there, 20 to 7. So they know how to play at home against the good ones. Second and eight, Sherman. Picked off by Dre Bly, number 31, and chalk up number 10. If, folks, hold on a minute, there's a flag down at the 38-yard line. And that's what I mean when I say a couple of the passes have just been right to him this year. You know, he says they, they throw the ball to me, and I catch it. What else can I do? It looked to me like Jermaine Crowell, for some reason, quit on that football. So that's the second Virginia turnover of the ball game. And you up the turnover margin again for North Carolina. Yeah, there's Crowell in the middle there. Now he's going to get bumped inside a little bit, and that disrupts him. But he can go for the football. He thinks it's going to be thrown out of bounds. Jermaine has got to go and bat that football away. There's no reason to quit on that football. That's a bad play by Jermaine Crowell. Dre Bly leads the country with 10 interceptions out of Chesapeake, Virginia. We had a nice discussion with him yesterday during practice in their walkthrough. He had a tough time getting about 40 tickets together for men, <laughs> friends and family members. He sure did. Chesapeake, what's up, y'all? What's up, Don? Too bad you can't come. Good job, Bob. Well, he took care of everybody who couldn't come and couldn't come, and everybody back home. And why not? When you have double-digit interceptions, you can do that. A couple shout-outs for his friends, Johnson and McGregor, in the backfield. Flags down. Well, of course, you know, the cornerbacks were a big question mark going into the season, Mark. Yeah, the cornerbacks were, the receivers, kicking game. This infraction against North Carolina. That's their first penalty of the ball game. Dead ball. Matt Brown on the left. 
George Welsh on the right. Brown, a disciple of sorts of Barry Switzer, took a lot of his coaching philosophy from Coach Switzer. While he was at Oklahoma, first down and 15 now for North Carolina. 440 remaining in the first half. Out of the backfield, Johnson eluded one tackler, hand walks his way over the 20, out to the 21. And let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins for more on the Carolina coach. Well, guys, you know, we were able to have North Carolina against Clemson at the beginning of the year, and it's interesting to see how well they have developed since that game. Coming into it, Max said he had five areas that he really had question marks. They've all been answered with exclamation points and A pluses. Let's take a look at the questions that Matt Brown had for his club coming into this season. The first was his quarterback, and obviously Keldorf has been terrific, has great numbers. Says the players really enjoy being around him as well. Second, wide receivers. Four players have 30 catches and a bonus with Octavius Barnes recovery from that serious knee injury. We'll, go, we'll follow through on the others here after this play. All right, Dean. Get right back to you. It's second down and 10 right now. Watson and Johnson out of the backfield. Keldorf blitzed and brought down at the 14-yard line. The fifth sack of the afternoon for Virginia. Joe Harris got to the quarterback that time. Let's go back to Dean. The other areas of concern for Mac Brown was secondary. That was a major one. Right now, it's a major plus. Mac didn't know who would kick 30 minutes before the opener. And obviously, now it's more than solid. And early games with Clemson, Syracuse, Georgia Tech, Florida State, you know, he didn't think his team would be 500 at this point. The report card does say A+, plus, and they are number six in their ranking, so they have done extremely well. Yeah, and he has done one of the outstanding jobs in coaching in the country this year, Dean. Thanks a lot. Third down and 17. You know, that last sack was caused by a zone blitz. Defensive lineman dropped out. Let's see if Virginia goes to it again. Keldorf eludes the pressure and short arms it. It's incomplete at the 30. A nice defensive sequence for the Cavalier defense that time. Sharper in on the coverage. Nay Brown, the intended receiver. Right here, you're going to see defensive lineman Maurice Anderson, number 85. See him drop back. Now, he doesn't look like he belongs in his own. He bumps into the referee, comes over, tries to cover. But when you bring linebackers and other players from the outside, this defense drops its tackles back to create problems with hot receivers. It's a great concept. It works in the pros, and Virginia's using it here in college. DePriest punting from his own three. He shanked the last one. This one goes high, and Barber calls for the fair catch right at the 50. A 37-yard punt, nothing on the return. Tied at three in the ACC when we come back. There you go. Backs out of the eye first and ten. Sherman out of the backfield. Barber escaped a missile that time. A scud at the 44. Mike Pringley made the tackle, but wow. Tiki Barber escaped with his life that time. Yeah, Greg Williams came flashing in. And I mean, for some reason, he closed his eyes. Tiki gave him a little whoop inside and was able to avoid getting crushed on that play. Check it out, right at the end of this. Okay, it's a little bit late. But boy, what a move by Tiki Barber. Out of necessity. Second and five, Barber again. Between the tackles, stopped up at the 44-yard line. He'll be about four yards short of the first down. Third down coming up, John. One more look at that last one. Yeah, watch number three coming in. Closing in on Tiki Barber. I got him. No, you don't. I mean, <laughs> boy, that's something you just can't teach running backs. That is a neat move on the inside. After concentrating on the football, that peripheral vision to make a move like that, it's something special. Let's look at the guy who barely missed, Greg Williams, number three. Sherman looking up at his teammates in the huddle on third down and four. Look at Barber's numbers. Mr. All-Purpose in the ACC. He leads the conference in that category. Now he's in motion. Barber with the catch. But he's short of the first down at the 43-yard line. The Carolina defense holding on third down. It'll be fourth coming up. Greg Williams making the tackle. We talked about Tiki Barber and his all-purpose yardage and his proficiency. He leads the conference. Johnson is number two. A lot of great running backs in this uh, conference, John. Two seniors who have been doing it for four years on a consistent basis in this football game today. It's just a pleasure to sit back and watch them play. 
Ray Bly standing on his own 10. Rice will try and hang this one inside the 20. And he overpooched that one. He sure did. That kind of caught at the bottom of the leg. He, he had his toe up too high, I think. Went straight up in the air, and it's outside of the 20-yard line. So had he kicked that into the end zone, it would have been a lot better. Yeah, just an 18-yard punt for Bryce. And the ball is spot on the 24-yard line. That almost took the blimp down. It went so high in the air. 116 to play in the first half. 3-3, a defensive struggle. When you look at some of the defenses in this division, some great ones. Clemson has a good defense, two great defenses here today. Florida State. And we have an official timeout on the field. Slight problem. As we wait for the chains to be set in their proper position. <laughs> we weren't too bad on the ice the other day here in Charlottesville. Well, There's a nice little rink right next to our hotel. We went over there and made fools of ourselves for a little while with rented skates. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for a guy who was born on skates up north of the border, uh, I think I've lost it. I've well, lost you, a stride. I was <laughs> impressed with your skating ability, Mark. It really was. I need. Mean, I can't skate without a, a hockey stick in my hand. <laughs> On second down and ten, the pass by Keldorf incomplete, intended for Octavius Barnes. It's third down and ten now. Keldorf, just seven of fifteen today now. A total of 58 yards with one interception, and North Carolina. Not too good on third down conversions, just 0 of 7. And they come into the season at over 50%, 52.9%. It's one of the top numbers in the country. So Virginia is shutting them down in all the things they're accustomed to doing. Keldorf. Oh. They blitz and they get to him at the 15. That's the sixth sack of the day. Jamie Sharper came in there and hit him hard. I don't know what this offense is going to do in adjustments at half time, but one thing they have to do is find number 33 every time he lines up. Again, he comes in with a twist inside, and Leon Johnson doesn't pick him up. He has a clear shot right through to the football. That little twist inside occupied the guard, and he was able to come through. That's a new Virginia record, 37 sacks, and Sharper has his fourth today. The team has six today. And Louisville had sick all last week, you know, six, six sacks against them in the entire game Louisville had. So certainly Virginia picked up a couple things from watching that Louisville game. It's like you said, John, they're going to have to account for number 33, Jamie Sharper. Came into the game with three sacks, now has seven total on the season. And you know what? Number 33, along with his teammate, number 42, are probably playing for postseason kudos. All the talk is surrounding the North Carolina linebackers. A lot of the talk surrounds them. A lot of publicity goes to Hamilton, Mays, Defensive and Simmons. Call for a timeout. That is their first charge time. But Sharper and Ferrier are getting their pub and hype today. Virginia uses a timeout. They have two What's the design of this defense. There's a twist up front that occupies the offensive lineman. 33 is able to go right through without anybody getting a fall on him. See that twist in front of him. The back goes outside. Leon Johnson should have gone inside. You always want to protect inside out and help your quarterback out. But Sharper is just shooting right at quarterbacks today, having, what, four sacks in this game so far. His Sharper image is focused squarely on the quarterback. He's gotten there four times today. DePriest punting from his own three. Virginia. Coming closer and closer, Barber with a fair catch at the Virginia 48-yard line, a 37-yard punt. And the Cavaliers, as they have so many times this afternoon, enjoy good field position once again with 53 seconds to play in the first half. We are tied at three. You know, they, it seems like most of this football game has been played the other side of the football field, the average field position for Virginia has been their own 41-yard line, and they've been able to take advantage of it, though, only once with three points. But here again, they have a good opportunity. 
Sherman to pass. Going up top for Owen, and it's knocked away. Dre Bly says, not in my house, not in my territory. Number 31 leads the nation with 10 picks at one today. You know, and here's the bump and run defense. See Dre Bly, he's right in there. Owen tries to get a little move on him, but he got the bump and he starts looking for the football. He identifies where the ball is, closes toward the sideline. That's great recovery speed by the cornerback. That's what all great corners have. I and mean, that, that's just terrific, terrific one-on-one -on -one coverage by Dre Bly. Second down, Sherman. Tried to find Crowell at the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and 10 coming up. Omar Brown in on the coverage. As Sherman fires incomplete. Been with George Welsh for over 20 years, going back to the Naval Academy. And he has got a pretty good game plan going so far today, but the Tar Heels, despite their poor field position defensively, not allowed Virginia to score more than three points. And still threes on the board. Sherman looking downfield. Hit his receiver in the hands, and it's incomplete. Number two, Demetrius Dotson, put a hand up almost as if to guard his face from the ball, yeah, I did. think, John. Yeah, he sure did. He, he didn't quite have his body around and in position to catch the football. Looked like he had an opportunity to make a play. But uh, on the other hand, when he actually hit it, it popped up in the air, and the Tar Heels had a chance to break on it. So it's three passes. Virginia decides to go with three consecutive passes, and they don't convert on any one of the passes. Much to the chagrin of the head coach, George Welsh. Will Bryce hunting again for the fifth time now today. Johnson standing back on his own 11-yard line. Welsh says he's never had a better punter than Bryce, who gets off a nice high punt coming down at the 15-yard line. A 37-yard punt, and Carolina is 85 yards away. We are nestled among the Blue Ridge Mountains here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Look high above from Scott Stadium, at Scott Stadium. This is a very raucous crowd. When they get loud, they really get loud. And it makes you wonder, John, if sometimes Chris Keldor might be having some trouble hearing or checking at the line. Well, he has a full package. They limited what he did early in the season. Now they allow him to do a lot of things audible. But this is the seventh possession this quarter for North Carolina. The last three possessions, they were three and out, Mark. Keldorf takes the knee. Talk about Carolina's first half possessions. Not great field goal, uh, field position. And right here, the turnover by Tiki Barber. That's where they got their only points so far in this game. And Keldorf throwing just his fourth interception of the season, too. Well, the first 30 minutes are in the books. Jamie Sharper has been the man defensively for Virginia. He's come through on a number of different design schemes that have worked real well. The defense has six sacks today. Sharper has four of those themselves. And you can see the rushing yardage is negative 15 yards. That's because of all the quarterback sacks. And there's Rick Lance, who's done an excellent job today of getting this team up, ready to play. I don't know how much of that incentive you talked about, Mark, is playing in here, but the defense is playing well. Yeah, negative 15 yards rushing for North Carolina. 58 yards passing, 43 total. That's the story in this game. Conversely, though, you know, even though Virginia's moved the football somewhat effectively, they've only been able to score three points. And there's a look at Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator. One of his credos is that you measure quality by the price you pay for non-conformance. Well, so far, his scheme and his players are conforming to the scheme, and they've got a lot of quality to show for it. Virginia kicking off North Carolina set to receive that's Leon Johnson taking a knee two yards deep So the Tar Heels will start on their own 20 yard line to begin the third quarter of play a little talking going on there too You saw Johnson throw an elbow on first down average yards 1.2 negative 0.8 negative 5.2 That's where all those blitzes came in those six sacks on third down that's playing some solid defense. Mac Brown talked about line calls, John. What did he mean? Well, half time. The quarterback makes some calls. He identifies where the strength of the defense is. You can see the pointing going on right now between him and the center so they can understand who they have to block defensively. North Carolina runs it on first and 10. That's Johnson out near the 22 yard line. Nothing coming easily for Mac Brown and his troops today. Barrier and White making the tackle on defense for Virginia. 
Just underway in the third quarter. Matt Brown, the head coach for North Carolina, hoping to crack that losing streak here at Scott Stadium, dating back to 1981. Second and seven, Keldorf to pass. L.C. Stevens got held up, and Keldorf throws it out of bounds. Dean Blevins, he had some comments from the coach at halftime. What do you say? Yeah, I visited with both coaches. Mac Brown said, obviously, defensively, he's pleased with what's going on. Offensively, he said the noise was causing some problems, and line checks were a problem. And they talked about that at halftime, and they think they had that corrected. I also visited with George Welch, and he said that his class, said, Coach, what are you going to do to score points? He says, I don't know. He <laughs> said, uh, what we really need to do is be able to complete some 10 and 15 yard passes. Well, he was honest when he said, I don't know, I guess. Third down and seven for North Carolina. And it's noisy. How will Keldorf cope with the noise? He completes a pass to May Brown, but it's far short of the first down. Imagine John Spagnola how noisy it is down there on the field when you're the quarterback trying to audible. It gets so loud sometimes you feel it, you don't hear it. It seems to go right through your chest when a crowd gets into a football game like they are here today. DePriest punting for the seventh time today. And this one takes a Virginia bounce initially. The market up at the 41 yard line. It's been the story of the day so far. Virginia with good field position when they start off when we come back. Welcome back where we have a barn burner Virginia and North Carolina tied at three and let's take a look at the top ten in college football right now according to Associated Press and there you see tied for number six the Tar Heels Mac Brown wanting this to become also a football school well Mac good news for you here's the basketball rankings the Tar Heels are number eight and it's not as though he doesn't want them to be number one guys but he's wanting it to become a football school and it is becoming that Injuries, Pringling out, defensive end for North Carolina. Rowe out, sprained ankle for Virginia. All right, Dana, we saw Rowe's replacement being worked on, too. Here's Barber cutting back against the grain down to the 44. Well, you know, Dean, just to follow up on that, Mac Brown knows as well as Dean Smith or anyone, if you want to win and stay in the top 10 and keep that high ranking, you got to win in adverse situations. You have to win on the road. And that's the challenge that Mac Brown put to his football team, not only before this game, but at halftime when he reminded them, hey, if you want to be top 10, you've got to win here in this difficult situation. George Welsh, of course, has different designs. See how he peaked when I called his name? <laughs> Second down and eight. He's got good ears. He's a coach. Here's Barber. Out to the 48-yard line, setting up about third down and four to go for Virginia. Williams making the tackle. Look at top 25 action today. Florida winning impressively in the end. Ohio State leading as we speak. What about Peyton Manning suffering an injury today for Tennessee? Third down and four. Up top intended for the big fella and it's incomplete. And a late oh, flag. They didn't call that interference. Sherman went for Crowell, and they'll get the interference call. Bly and the strong safety check that free safety. Omar Brown, number two, in on the coverage. Jermaine Crowell works one on one. He's a tall receiver. He's run this corner pattern all day one long. He's working on Dre Bly, number 31. Now he has Bly beat. But Bly has helped over the top from Omar Brown. He makes a play on the football, but he goes through Jermaine Crowell, and they're ruling since the ball was thrown out of bounds, it was uncatchable, and there's no pass interference call. I think that's an accurate call by the officials. Yeah, you'd like to see officials confer and come to and arrive at the correct decision. Sets up fourth down and four for Virginia. And Will Bryce into punt again. Leon Johnson standing at his own 11 yard line. Little motion up front. 
And flags down on the play. You know, I stand corrected. Watch where the ball bounces at the end of this play, Mark. Brown goes over the top. Freeze it right there. Stop. See where the ball bounces? I mean, that bounces there. He could have made that catch. That was an inaccurate call by the officials. Pro uh, the leaping ability to be able to catch that football and keep his feet in bounds. And six the ball four. landed right on the mark between the inbounds and out-of-bounds part. So I don't agree with that call now. At 6'4", he's got a head start on it. Look at Bryce, the punter. In 93 against North Carolina, he averaged 46 yards a punt on four punts. In 94, he averaged 46 yards a punt on five. Putting three inside the 20. Johnson lets this one bounce. And where they're going to down it, they're going to oh, say it's got to come out to the 20. A 57-yard punt, they couldn't put it down on the one. Had the second player never touched it, that ball would have been right on the one-yard line. Rice with a great effort, but the rest of the special teams crew couldn't put it down. Get out right of the back. way. <laughs> Keldorf on first and ten hands it off to his tailback. That's Johnson who weaves his way out to the 23 yard line. 1150 to play in the third quarter in the last four possessions for Carolina offensively. It's been the Rockettes offense John that's one two three kick. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been dancing that tune for a while, too. Too long for Matt Brown. Second down and seven. Keldorf underneath and batted away nicely at the 27-yard line. James Farrier, number 42. The outstanding pass rusher and showing John that he's good in coverage, too. Well, he sure is. That's the second time today we saw him bat a ball away against Leon Johnson earlier in the football game. And right here where he plays those underneath patterns exceptionally well. I really think North Carolina needs to take a sh couple shots on first down with some deep pass patterns. They've been trying to throw the underneath stuff and Virginia's just playing it too well. Look at the third down conversions. Third down and seven right here. The quick slant to Octavius Barnes complete first down Tar Heels at the 37 yard line. Dwayne Ashman made the tackle but not before a 13 yard pickup. Octavius Barnes one of the better comeback stories in the conference. And for Keldorf a new Carolina single season completion record. The transfer from Utah State. It's interesting that Jim Zorn one of his coaches at Utah State told him Chris I don't think you'll ever be a big time quarterback. That's right. Then he went to El Camino College and he was behind Steve Sarkeesian. Finally, he transferred to Palomar, and that's where he had some success. And he fires incomplete at the 39 yard line that time. It'll be second down and 10. It's a real testament to Chris Keldorf that he hung in there, though, because when a former pro quarterback tells you he doesn't think you can play, you should try out for tight end or linebacker. I mean, that can rattle your confidence, but his parents hung in there with him and said, listen, if you want to play quarterback, don't be waking up sometime when you're 40 or 50 years old. Saying, I wish I had tried to play quarterback. So he hung in there. He went to two different junior colleges. They scouted everybody in the country, Mac Brown and, and company, out of the junior colleges, and they came up with him, and he has delivered for this team. And a former recruit, John, at Dean Smith's basketball camp, former camper. Rick Lenz watching from the sideline, the defensive coordinator, sending his defense after Keldorf, who fires incomplete for Stevens at the 50. It'll be third down and 10, and Keldorf picking himself up albeit smiling off the turf you know maybe they didn't get to him this time but they're knocking Chris Keldorf down and he has a very quick trigger right now see sharper bearing down on him doesn't quite get through but Dylan Dylan Taylor does who's playing in front of Wally Rayner who was hurt today Keldorf 6'5 245 a big guy down from 250 earlier this year third and ten Complete to Stevens and another third down conversion for the Tar Heels. Their second in a row, a pickup of 12 yards. Joe Williams, number 23, being worked on. Keldorf showing dexterity, fielding that snap, John. Yes, he did. He, he caught the ball and guy came up with it and located Stevens, the wide receiver, and threw a strike to him. 
you know, that's understanding your offense and not panicking and have some confidence in your offensive line. Stevens is working one on one with Joe Williams, though. Keep in mind, Dean Blevins said Joe Rowe is out. So the second best corner on this team is out of the game, and they're working on that side of the football field. And this time they give it to Leon Jance Johnson, the natural, unable to get untracked, gaining about three yards over to Virginia's side of midfield. Joe Harris making the tackle that time. Johnson has run eight times today for a total of 21 yards. They have been unable to solve that Virginia defense with respect to the run. Second down and six for Carolina. Johnson, just a couple of credit hours short of graduating. 9.56 to play in the period. The give us to the fullback that time, Chris Watson. 5'10", 247-pound senior. Good receiver out of the backfield usually that time. A rare occasion, they let him run it. You know, this, this defensive group, watch them all look over for signals from Rick Lance. He doesn't rely on one player to get the signals and relay it. This way, every player is on the same page defensively. He likes that system a lot more because then players can't come to him and say, I wasn't sure about what was called, coach. Third down and four. They've converted on the last two third down situations. Keldorf's going to pass. Under backside pressure, got rid of it. And got another first down. Octavius Barnes, the senior, pardon me, the junior, with a pickup of 12. A look at the fans, a look at the frenetic pace of this game. It is one of the longest, most intense rivalries in all of college football. In fact, it is tied for the sixth longest rivalry in college football. The one just ahead of it, Texas and Texas A&M. And don't forget that you can see those two teams hook up on ABC Thanksgiving Friday from College Station, Texas. I got a great place, John, for barbecue, Tom's Barbecue. You can buy the ribs. This is the 10th play of the drive for North Carolina. Under pressure, Keldorf got rid of it intended for Johnson. Look at the current drive, the 11th play coming up. They picked up the flag on the last play. Second and 10 on the blitz. They catch them in the blitz for the screen. Johnson down to the 24-yard line. Another Carolina first down. Chopped up 11 yards of offense on that play. Poindexter making the stop. Well, when you have a defense that's turning it loose the way Virginia is today, this is a great call. You see the blitzing by James Ferrier. Number 42, that means there's not that many people in the secondary. The linemen get downfield. Johnson catches the ball and converts a first down. Watch the blitz. Watch the people come through. And look at those linemen get out in front of them. Big 61 there. Mike Hopgood doesn't get a block, but he certainly looks good running out there, doesn't he? He sure does, John. That They've got four first downs in this half. They had four in all of the first half. And Leon Johnson looking to add to the total. Brought down at the 22-yard line by number 42, James Ferrier. You know, Ferrier, number 42 for Virginia, the 6'2", 229-pound senior, says, you know, I don't say a lot. I'm just a boring guy to talk to. You don't, I don't, he doesn't come up with those great quotes. Now, you know, he's very studious, too. When he was a freshman and a sophomore, he'd go through the film meetings with Rick Lance, and he wouldn't say a single thing. Then afterwards, he'd have a whole list of questions that he'd go to his coach and say, what about this? What about that? So Rick Lance says a lot. Admiral, he said he's been coaching 26 years. Sharper and Perry are the two best outside linebackers he's ever had. And making a statement today, second down and eight for Keldor, out of the shotgun. Johnson, nowhere to go. They threw it to the short side of the field, and there was a host of Virginia tacklers awaiting him. Williams and Ferrier in on the stop. Tied at three apiece at the President's School. Keldorf over the middle, coolly finding his receiver at the 12-yard line. We'll have to wait for the spot. Not sure whether he got the first down. It appears that he does. You know, that's the third reception for Octavius Barnes on this drive. And Octavius, who, as we know, was the leading receiver here two years, had a sit-down with Mac Brown. Mac Brown saw that he was discouraged and disappointed in his performance. He sat down and said, listen, we're not disappointed in you at all. You're a guy we count on in this football team. It's great to see Barnes delivering, the veteran, delivering in this drive. John, first down and 10, and this is another veteran, the senior. Leon Johnson down to the 11-yard line, picking up about three on the play. It'll be second down. 
Taylor making the stop. North Carolina, Matt Brown is the chief of the ship, and they have not been to a New Year's Day Bowl since 1950 when Choo Choo Justice was on the grid. Huh? Oh, I remember him, don't you? <laughs> Second down and seven. Johnson on the toss. Johnson down to the eight yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go for Carolina. On each of the previous third down situations, they've been able to convert four times. And now they'll face another one. Barrier and Dingle making the stop on Johnson that time. Watch the center here, Jeff Saturday. Boy, you get a feeling of being a linebacker here. Gets a nice cut block on Dylan Taylor, the linebacker. That's why Saturday should be first team all say CC. He was honorable mention the last two years. A look at North Carolina in the red zone on third and four. They've got to get to the eight yard line. Keldorf's going to pass. Complete. Barnes again. You got to give it to him. He got it for you before and he did it again. Fifth touchdown in the last six games. He's starting to come on for this Carolina offense. And boy, did he deliver on that drive. He was the man. The Mac Daddy of clutch receivers in third down situations and conversions. Capping a 17 play, 80 yard drive using 632 on the clock. Chris Keldorf, take the bow. Carolina leads 10 3 when we return. Look at defensive coordinator, Rick Lance. Yeah, he's drawing up that touchdown play by Octavius Barnes right there, where he came underneath and caught that pass. North Carolina, John, on that last drive was five for five in third down conversions. And they hadn't converted one all game up to that point. They were 0 for 9. Grandma, what's up? Everybody down there? Check out the cranium of Octavius Barnes. He is literally hot. Ryan Schmitz. He's on fire. Schmitz with the kickoff. Wilkins and Jones back deep. Comes down to one of the up men. Oh, Taylor with some moves. Shannon Taylor out to the 30 yard line. One of the better comeback stories in all of college football, Octavius Barnes. In all game long, we've seen Jamie Sharper blitzing. This time he calls off the blitz, drops back, and he slips where he's supposed to be able to bump Barnes. Watch how he drops back in his zone. And now he sees Barnes, he tries to jump it, but he slips when he's bumped by the other receiver. Barnes goes underneath that zone and scores the touchdown. Boy, did they nickel and dime Virginia to death. 17 plays in all. And now it's Sherman's turn. Takes it himself, he's elusive. That's one of the concerns of the Carolina defensive coaches. Out of the pocket, he can do some damage. Gained about four on that play. You now the reason Sharper slips is he gets bumped off by the tight end Freddie Jones who just gets a piece of him right there. That's all it takes but it keeps him from driving Barnes and that's not exactly a pick but it's ticky tack. I mean it's right in right right on the edge there. Oh picks a four letter word. You can't say that. <laughs> Second down and six. Barber out near the first down about a yard short at the thirty nine yard line with 4.37 to play now in the third quarter. Virginia trailing North Carolina 10 to 3. Terry and Brown in on the tackle that time. Look at Tiki Barber. Leading rusher coming into this game in the ACC. Third down and one. Lamar Brown the strong safety. One yard to go. Barber, not sure he got there. It's going to be close. It's going to be extremely close. I think he got the spot. I 
judging from the line judge he's got his right foot down it's just past that 40 yard line surprised they didn't run behind Jeremy Raley there the big left offensive guard they went instead on the right side between behind Trevor Britton the right guard one of the interesting stories on that offensive line, right, Dean Blevins? Yeah, you know, you mentioned Jeremy Raley. This is the everything man. This guy is in uh, terrific condition, but he's wearing down. His offensive coordinator said he, he maintains such a busy schedule. He comes and meets with his offensive coordinator at 7.30 every morning. He is a volunteer teacher at an elementary school from 8 until 3, and then he has football practice from 3.30 until 5.30 or 6, and then he has classes at night. He's married on top of all of that. He's an honor student, and he's been uh, awarded many times for his service to the community and just an outstanding guy. But he's wearing down as the season goes along. Hopefully, he won't be wearing down today for Virginia fans. Yeah, he probably needs about 36 hours in a day to get all that done. Not much time to play for Jeremy Raley, number 69 there. Boy, what a schedule. <laughs> I got to be tired just hearing about the whole thing. <laughs> No time to sit around and watch Oprah at 4 o'clock, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> 3.57 to play in the third quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. And North Carolina, who hasn't won here at Scott Stadium since 1981, leads it 10-3. Charles Kirby was the injured player on that last play. Sherman fires, and it's picked off. It's Dre's day. Dre Bly takes it to the house. That's number 11 interception. extra point Carolina can sense it they can smell it they can feel it in line for potentially an at-large Alliance Bowl bid and Dre Bly just set an ACC record now with 11 interceptions in one season Dre Bly's at the bottom of the screen playing inside now this is a zone technique he's going to play an outside technique one-on-one -on -one. Brian Owen here, see, he's got inside. Now watch him, watch the quarterback, and he plants, and he drives on that football. Owen's got to come back to the football more than he did. Dre Bly beat him to the interception point and takes it in for the touchdown. That's a huge score for the Tar Heels. Dre Bly was telling us at practice yesterday how he's friends with a lot of his counterparts on the other side of the field for Virginia. Ran, ran into them a lot this summer on the beaches yeah, he of Virginia. Right. And, uh, nobody kicks in in his face, John Spagnola. Not at all, but he can't wait to get to the beach next year. <laughs> Do a little flexing. 11 interceptions. That last one damaging to Virginia. You know, now Carolina can take a lot more chances defensively. Now they're in the kind of football game where they're comfortable. They were only behind for the third time all season today when they were down 3-0. They got back, and now they have a comfortable two-point or two-touchdown lead. That's big for this defense. Schmidt's kicking off. Again, it comes down to the same up man, Taylor, who brings it out over the 30 to the 33-yard line. And a silencer has been put on this crowd here at Virginia. Right now, we have a new quarterback, Aaron Brooks, a 6'3", 195-pound sophomore. He was edged out by Sherman in spring ball for the job, and he tosses it to Barber. Bly misses the tackle, and Barber has the first down at the 48-yard line. A 16-yard pickup, his longest of the afternoon. And there's a look at the new quarterback. K. Mays made the stop. Look at his 96 numbers. Hasn't seen a lot of action. For a while, he's being alternated in every football game, but as of late, Tim Sherman's been going from beginning to end in the game now 
I can understand pulling Tim Sherman, but I don't fault him entirely for that interception return. The receiver has to come back to the football and help his quarterback out. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. Brooks throwing, and it's incomplete. Working away from Trey Bly that time, trying to pick on Robert Williams to no avail. Terrence Wilkins was the intended target. Brooks a little bit different in stature from his predecessor, Tim Sherman. Brooks stands 6'3", a little more rangy, a little more lanky. Yeah, he's a good athlete, too. He was a high school McDonald's All-American basketball team uh, player, so you know that he has some ability to move and has some speed. And, you know, I just think that he's the guy who's going to inherit the starting quarterback position. He didn't get it this year, but he's got two more years ahead of him, maybe starting right now for the rest of his career. Crowell in motion. Brooks passing complete to Crowell. A look from the end zone. This is what the quarterback Aaron Brooks is facing. And time running out on the clock. Flags down on the play. Trey Bly making the big play just moments ago with an interception, his 11th of the season for a touchdown. Bly with many people in attendance watching him perform today. You know the guy's got skills because he was able to round up some 40 tickets for friends and family. Boy, what a show he's putting on for everybody today. Third down and eight for Virginia after the infraction. Coming on the blitz. Brooks gets rid of it. And it's picked off. It's ruled an interception. Omar Brown finally picked it up. You know, it was picked off by Robert Williams, who looked like number 29. Then it was stripped out. And Tiki Barber came over and really cracked Omar Brown. This time it was Brown. Last time it was Bly and Moore from Dean. Dean? Just tell me when to go. I see a red light, so I think I'll start talking. I'm sitting here with some fanatic fans from North Carolina, Dre Bly's mother and father. This is Donald and Gloria, and could you be prouder of your son? Oh, Lord, we, oh, we couldn't be any proud of him. And we just thank God for giving us a son like Dre. <laughs> well, they're happy that Dre is a good young man. These guys are educators. Both of the Bly's are, are uh, teachers, and you guys you guys uh, keep, a, keep an eye on his grades as well, I understand. First thing I ask him when I call, how are the books? And then I ask him about football. My first concern, the books. Well, Donald, you got uh, you got a bunch of friends and family here because you guys are from Chesapeake, Virginia. Yes, we are. We are from Chesapeake. My brothers and uh, two of my sisters are here, and cousins and neighbors. Okay, Gloria, you're the one that's vivacious. You're you're the one that has some energy. Get people excited now that he's had a big game, will you? You know, hey, Dean, uh, find out where the food's at after the game, will you? <laughs> You know, we talked to we talked to Dre Bly before the game yesterday on the walkthrough, and he uh, we asked him if his mother was going to be at the game and when she'd be there, and he said, "Oh, she's the first one here. Don't worry about that. She'll be jumping around before the game. You can't she's miss the her. first one there. You can't miss her." <laughs> Meanwhile, Keldorf has really picked up the pace, seven for his last eleven, and a touchdown. In stark contrast to his first ten. Less than a minute to play in the third quarter. Carolina leading by two converted touchdowns. Keldorf on first and ten. Incomplete to Elsie Stevens. And, you know, Stevens has struggled today, John. He's dropped at least two catchable balls. Joe Williams on the coverage. That's that right. Team. I actually have him for three that he's dropped. He dropped one very early in the first drive. This one hits him right in the numbers, and he just allows the ball to bounce off his stomach instead of catching with his hand. Stevens raises turkeys on his farm in Clinton, South Carolina. No right Carolina. at the end, look how the thing just pops right off there, and that's 
That's a gobble gobble catch right there. <laughs> he's got a couple of turkeys he's proud of Charlotte and Charles but I don't know if they're going to make it through Thanksgiving. We'll wait and see. Keldorf incomplete intended for Barnes. They might rule that a fumble Mark. They are they will. Boy that's a little surprising. From our vantage point it didn't appear as if he had it. Phelan made the recovery of the Barnes fumble. Uh, Davis Barnes comes in the slant and it's been working a lot today. Comes right across the middle. And let's see if he gets his feet down, gets control of this football. One, two, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. As he's putting the ball away, that ball slipped right out. It really wasn't hit out as much as he let it slip out as he was putting it away. The recovery was made by Ferrier. First and ten, Tiki Barber. It's been that type of afternoon. He had rushed for over 100 yards in 12 of the last 14 regular season games. Today, he's rushed 21 times, the number he's wearing, for a total of 60 yards, just over three yards per carry. Tiki Barber, not only an outstanding running back, but an outstanding student like his twin brother, Rondi. As time now winds down on the third quarter of play here in Charlottesville, Virginia, at Scott Stadium. Virginia with the ball, second down and nine. And that's where we will end things in the third period. North Carolina looking to improve to nine and one overall. They lead 17 to three. We'll return with more action between North Carolina and Virginia. Problem. Well, it's a half moon with 15 minutes to play. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Well, guys, I fell out of the stands with the Bly family into the, <laughs> the, the, the bench here with the North Carolina. And you'll see the players waving goodbye. And what they're doing is holding four fingers up, saying the fourth quarter is ours. And it has been. Mac Brown takes pride in the fact that he emphasizes the fourth quarter and that he thinks his players are in better, co better condition than the competition. The numbers support that theory. North Carolina has outscored its opponents 75 to 10 in the fourth quarter this season. That was a look at Jeff Mad Dog Madden, the strength and conditioning coach at North Carolina. And here's the pass on Brooks. And Brooks downfield intended for Brian Owen. Guess who was covering him? I'll give you one guess. Dre Bly, number 31. He has been all over the field today. It'll be third down and nine now for Virginia. Dre Bly with a couple of interceptions. Now has 11 on the season. Those are the ball at the 45 yard line. And just think that at the beginning of the season, the cornerbacks were one of the huge question marks for Carolina. They blitz off the corner. And it's ruled oh, boy. incomplete, almost picked off by Robert Williams. Yeah, Robert Williams working against Brian Owen. I mean, he got his hands on there, and Owen did a good job of trying to pull it away. But you get the sense almost that these quarterbacks are in the huddle for the Cavaliers. I mean, they have been on top of every single pass play in this game. Once you end of this play, Owen and Williams going at it. Now Owen gets his hands on it first. Williams pulls it away, but when he finally does get control, he stepped out of bounds. Into punt, Will Bryce, standing on his own 31. Dre Bly calls for the fair catch and lets it bounce. And it's short of the 20 at the 22-yard line. 33-yard punt, nothing on the return. A subdued, tie-wearing crowd here in Virginia. We'll be right back. First and ten. Leon Johnson that time. Gaining a few yards. Brought down by James Ferrier. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins as we look at the numbers after three quarters. Right here, 150 yards of total offense. 80 of that came in one drive for North Carolina and then points off turnovers. The two interceptions, one for a touchdown by Dre Bly and then field goal after the other one. And that is the story of this football game. 
Eldorf out of the shotgun on second and seven. Incomplete for L.C. Stevens. You know, usually during the course of this season, they have shown good chemistry, but today those two, Keldorf and Stevens, just a little bit off. McIver in on the cover. McKeever, pardon me, in on the coverage that time. Third down and seven now for the Tar Heels. Looking to snap a winless streak here at Scott Stadium, dating back to 1981. A trips left formation. Complete to Nay Brown. Brown tackled at the 31 yard line. Barber, Rondi Barber making the tackle, and it is close to the first down. Not close enough, though. They'll have to punt. Look at action in the ACC today. Clemson has really come on of late. 40 to 17 winners today. You know, they, they were two and three to start the season, and they've won their last five in a row now. Maryland with that big win Thursday night helped Mark Duffner's uh, situation out over Georgia Tech. That was an emotional game for him. Back to Clemson. Do you remember the disarray they were in when we saw them earlier? Under heavy pressure, the priest gets the punt off. Barber back at the 34. And he's forced out of bounds at the 41 yard line. A 36 yard kick. First and 10, 1306 to play in the fourth quarter. Carolina leads by 14. Brooks throws the out. Incomplete for Barber. Should have caught it. Greg Williams was right there with him, number three. But Barber should have hung on to that one. There's a penalty flag on the play. But you're right, Tiki Barber trying to do a little bit too much. You know, when you get down two touchdowns, you're not content with just catching a five-yard pattern. You want to turn a five-yard pattern into a 50-yard pattern. They are going to get their five yards because of the offsides there. Yeah. It's interesting that Tiki Barber holds a news conference after each and every Virginia game because there is an abundance of questions regarding his Heisman candidacy. Don't get the impression that George Wells uh, wanted to repeat that practice, though, did he? <laughs> it's a bit of a distraction week in and week out because there's a lot of newspapers, a lot of cities that cover this team, and you got to come out with some copy every week from those conferences. And he discontinued that practice. On the bootleg action, the pass is ruled complete at the 42-yard line to the tight end, Derry. A 14-yard pickup and a Virginia first down. 12.51 to play in the fourth quarter. Aaron Brooks came on in relief of Tim Sherman in the third quarter after Sherman threw an interception for a touchdown to Dre Bly. Backs out of the offset eye on first down and 10. Tiki Barber tripped up in the middle of the field at the 40-yard line by Kay Mays, number 53 for North Carolina, a guy who was all ACC a year ago and one of the top linebackers in the country. Have some amaze? He's a child of mine. Sherman pulled, as you mentioned, because of that interception for a touchdown. Again, I, I come back to the point that the receiver, Brian Owen, did not help him on that play. But sometimes you need a kick start for your offense, and Aaron Brooks has moved the ball somewhat effectively in his short tenure in this game. Second down and nine now. He has time, and he's finally brought down at the 39-yard line. Number 87, Greg Ellis. You know, here's where a quarterback is in a one-man receiver. Watch this. Tiki Barber goes in motion. Nobody else is really running a pass pattern. Watch Brooks look around. Now he goes Tiki. Now he goes backside. Nobody's, see, nobody's running a pattern for him. And he's just got to run the football. That was a one-man pattern that was covered by North Carolina. He had no place to go with the football and just took it to the ground. Three receivers out on third down and eight. Brooks to pass. Gets it downfield. Crowell was there but couldn't hang on. But there's a flag down at the 41-yard line back near the line of scrimmage. Crowell laid out nicely but couldn't hold the ball in. Well, he had a chance at that. 
get an idea of the arm strength of Brooks. Crowell running that corner pattern. He's been doing this all day long. Down to that goes up in the air. Oh, doesn't quite pull that in. Offside defense, five yards. Hey, that's twice in a row they've been offsides on this drive. Both times trying to bring a blitz, and both times Brooks has rolled out to his left to escape that blitz. Both these Virginia quarterbacks, Sherman and Brooks, good mobility. In and around the pocket, third down and three as a result of the penalty. You see their situations in third down. On the flanker screen, incomplete, and it's picked off. Brian Simmons, he returned one for a touchdown last week, and you know what? <laughs> this week, he didn't quite get there. 84 yards last week against Louisville in the fourth quarter. Man, twice in a row, he almost gets into the end zone on an interception. Aaron Brooks, the quarterback, ran him down. A touchdown saving tackle by the quarterback. You know, they're trying to get the ball to Terrence Wilkins again. He's going to break inside here. Remember the screen we saw earlier in this football game? The ball gets tipped a little bit. He tries to come up with a difficult catch. And I don't know how Brian Simmons <laughs> caught that football. That thing just stuck in his right arm. The ball found him more than he found it. It sure did. <laughs> hey, Brooks spiked him down to the ground, didn't he? When you throw interceptions, you're a little hot. Look at that <laughs> adrenaline going. <laughs> And North Carolina with the ball on Virginia's 10. Simmons, though, with a little bit of foot speed. Well, he picked that up from Deion Sanders, don't you think, right there? <laughs> that little kick out. Styling and profiling. Backs out of the eye on the toss. Leon Johnson maybe got a yard. This Virginia defense still playing tough. But turnovers have been... A big part of the story this afternoon for both teams. Virginia throwing four interceptions with a fumble. North Carolina with one of each. And that turnover margin now is five to two in this game. It keeps right on rolling. Number one in the nation, the turnover margin. They average a plus 2.2 a game. In this game, they're a little bit higher than that. Second down and goal. 10-21 remaining in the fourth quarter. Keldorf to pass on the slant for Barnes incomplete. He found Barnes on the last touchdown pass, but not this time. I tell you, that's a great job by Sam McKeever, breaking into the football, reading the pattern, and driving into that short slant pattern. Mckeever's been tested as a result of Joe Rowe not being able to go because of an ankle injury. That's right, he, he and Joe Williams have been playing that corner position. Keldorf, 17 for 33, one touchdown, one interception. Not a lot to get excited about, but again, you know, he threw that one interception in the second quarter of this game, and that's been it for the day for him. And finally, the defense turns things over for this football team. It's the way it's been going all year. Keldorf on third and goal, and he's picked off. And this one could be six. Antoine Harris is going to take this one to the house. Turnabout is fair play. number 26 for Virginia 95 yards on the interception for a touchdown 
Well, you got the sense that North Carolina was going to sleepwalk its way into a victory here. Up by 14, going in for more points. And all of a sudden, the crowd, which had been falling asleep, gets ignited by Antoine Harris. Mark, it's an incredible turnaround. Chris Keldor has thrown two interceptions today, uncharacteristically so. He's only thrown five on the season. Unfortunately for him, that last one went for six the other way. And North Carolina is up by seven, but Virginia's seventh win of the season still looms in the offense. This is a school of secret societies. You can see the seven on the hill a little more clearly earlier. But this place is packed. Garcia with the kick, squids it down to the 15. Keith Newman out to the third. And these fans are about to make a lot of noise. Scott Stadium is about to erupt. Watson and Linton working out of the eye. Linton out to the 21. But well, Chris Keldor was trying to go to Octavius Barnes. He's been delivering all day on the slant in. Watch Antoine Harris read and drive the football. He's going to read the quarterback, gets inside of that. It's a 95-yard touchdown return. And he does a little Green Bay imitation of its own. Ted Rezepilich also had a 95-yard touchdown return against Maryland. Let's see if he does his Green Bay thing. Not quite. <laughs> there he is up in the stands. Okay. It's a good thing they gave him back. Second down and eight. Keldorf out of the backfield. Oh. Incomplete. Almost picked off. Linton, the intended receiver. And it's third down and nine. We had a wingspan on John Harris. Almost got his hand on that football. He's 6'8", 270 pounds, and he read that little swing pattern, and boy, has the momentum ever shifted in the favor of the Cavaliers. This Virginia defense rejuvenated, reinvigorated. That little trip to the Alliance Bowl is going to be as easy as everybody thought a couple minutes ago for the Tar Heels. Certainly not. Third down and eight. They're 5 of 16 today. They're not going to get the first down. You would think Keldorf is having some kind of trouble hearing Wright and Harrison on the tackle. Harris with two big plays in that defensive stand. You saw those third down conversions. Those five conversions only happened in one drive. That's when they scored the touchdown. John, even Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator for Virginia, looked fired up. The priest punting now becomes even more paramount. Low snap, flags down the play. They'll run this one again. I tell you what, everybody is standing in the stadium too, Mark. It's so exciting to see. The temperature now falling a little bit too. You know, I was talking with Keldorf yesterday at practice, and he says that he's never played in weather this cold before. He's one of those California guys, so he thought that it might be a bit of a factor. You mean they don't get a little frost in Manhattan Beach, <laughs> California? <laughs> Maybe sunburn. I don't know about frost. The priest is going to punt again this time from his own three. He's had four block this year. Low snap, and he gets it off. A high spiral. Barber at the 40. And Barber is brought down after picking up just two yards on the return. A 43-yard punt, and Virginia trails by just seven when we come back. Tim Sherman is back in at quarterback now for Virginia, and he's going to pass. Under pressure, 
takes off down to the 49 yard line close to a first down K Mays making the stop for North Carolina so Sherman after sitting out the majority of the third quarter and giving way to Aaron Brooks comes back in now potentially to lead them to the tie it'll be second down and one I think that's a good move by George Welsh too. sit Sherman down let him get a grasp of what's going on in the football game this team got back in the game. I think Sherman has a better opportunity to bring this team back than Brooks does. Carolina blitzing, and Sherman wisely throws this one away. And Dean Blevins, uh, how warm are you downstairs, Dean? Well, the end of my nose is really cold, and the end of my toes are very cold. And uh, I think it's that way for a lot of people down here. On the field, it's probably not a factor. You mentioned with the quarterback at Carolina, you talked to him yesterday, and that it was a problem, or it is the coldest he's been in. It's 32 degrees down here right now. Guys, it's incredible the difference in the crowd reaction right now. Fans were actually leaving 10 minutes ago. Now everyone's standing, and the volume is incredible. Shame on ye of little faith. <laughs> That's right. Third down and one for the Cavaliers. Run a little option. Sherman keeps it himself and has the first down for the Cavs. First time today we've seen that option package. James Hamilton, number 54, making the stop for Carolina. And it's a good changeup, too for this offense in a short yardage situation. It's a nice way to give more than one play and one sort of a way of attacking the defense to work. And, and, and that can and a little audio problem there. Sherman held the football and got through for the first down. Here's Tiki Barber. No problem with Tiki. They can hear him loud and clear down to the 38. Greg Williams making the stop. Tiki Barber still running hard late in the game with now under seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. 6.52 to go. When you get eight yards on a first down like that, that really helps the play calling on second down. A good job by a surge of that offensive line for Virginia. They give it to the fullback this time who busts one up the middle. Down to the 27, that's Charles Kirby, number 36. I met him in the hotel today. He said he didn't like waiting around for these 330 games. The Virginia players at the same hotel we were, but they ran right behind Jeremy Raley, that left guard. He's got so much on his schedule. There's Charles Kirby. Stepped in when Daryl Medley got hurt. And Raley opening a very nice hole for him on the left side. Carolina defense is the third best run defense in the country yielding a little bit of yardage on the run right now first down and 10 Barber over the left side staying on his feet his forward progress will be marked at the T1 yard line where Omar Brown number two made the stop crowd now collectively on its feet but warm with emotion Second down and three for Virginia. Sherman to pass. Incomplete intended for Owen. Appeared to have it in his grasp, but couldn't squeeze it. It'll be third down and three to go. Robert Williams, number 29, was covering the slant. Well, that's number 29 going against 29. Ryan Owen just couldn't come up with that reception. The ball was thrown well by Sherman. And that's the kind of play this team needs to have. If they're going to tie this game up. Again, they come out with their twin set to the right. Crowell is the inside receiver. Barber in motion. Sherman into the end zone for Crowell. Jump ball incomplete. And Dre Bly with a look as if to say no certainly not you know first of all Sherman wanted to go to Tiki Barber in the flat they covered that pretty well he went to a secondary receiver why not lay it up in the air for the big guy Crowell but again Dre Bly shows his ability to time his jump and he's up there even though he's given up about a half a foot he's able to get up there and knock that ball away Dre Bly, it's been his kind of day so far. 17-10 when we come back.
This is why Tim Sherman threw the ball to Crowell. Tiki Barber's going to come in motion here. He gets covered on the pick play. See 29, Brian O. He tries to pick the defensive back. So now Sherman had to go to a secondary receiver. One-on-one -on -one coverage. You take that matchup any time. But Dre Bly once again comes up big for the Tar Heel defense. Fourth and three. They're going for it. They are four of nine on fourth down conversions. Sherman out of the shotgun. And he's going to run it himself. He has the first down at the 15-yard line. Greg Williams ran him out. It's a heavy play by Sherman. You know, you have man-to-man -man coverage downfield. Everybody's back. It's turned to him. Playing man-to-man -man coverage in that secondary in the linebackers. And he just takes it upfield for the first down. Vance left early. Some wanted to leave early. Certainly, they got to be thinking about coming back if you've left. 13 to play in the fourth quarter. Virginia down by seven with the ball in North Carolina's 17-yard line. Tiki Barber trying to run between the tackles, gaining about two yards. Downstairs to Dean. Guys, stop the presses. I've just seen a smile on the face of George Welsh. <laughs> it came on that fourth down scramble. He can't smile. That's a new one. Did he get it on tape, Dean? <laughs> no, I didn't, but uh, just trust me on this one. Okay, second down and nine. Backs out of the eye with 4.36 to play. Tiki Barber off tackle over the left side, running over Jeremy Raley, big, strong, number 69. Barber brought down at about the 12 by K. Mays. Tiki Barber has had to work hard for everything, as has number 69, really. But a big part of this drive has been Tim Sherman. He's rushed three times for 17 yards. Tiki with 79 yards on the day. The whole Carolina offense with just 24. Keep in mind, all those sacks are deducted out of rushing yardage, and that's why it's so low for the day. Once again, it is third and long, third and seven. Crowell hangs on to it and is hit at the seven yard line by Robert Williams. Close to the first down and Crowell really got hit hard. You know, you look at Crowell number 17, he said one of his idols growing up was Herman Moore, the former receiver here at Virginia, John. So you want to be a tall receiver and pattern yourself after Herman Moore. You think they hit hard here? Wait till he gets to the next level. They really hit at that level. Another fourth down play. Barber and Kirby out of the eye. The option. Sherman keeps it and he scores. Secret Society would love this one. Out of the hold of number seven, the extra point is good. We're tied at 17. Virginia hoping for its seventh win of the season. Are you trying to tell me something? Just a little bit. <laughs> 3.07 to play in the ball game. Oh, that's incredible. Tim Sherman gets back in the football game. George Welch brings it back in. Sevens are flying all around this game right now. He scored from seven yards out. George Welch decides to go back to number seven, and he executed that drive. A couple of first downs in the, in the option game, the touchdown out of the option game, a fourth down scramble. Tim Sherman brings life back into this football team. And here's the option to the left side. Carolina did not spend a lot of time preparing for this. And Sherman cuts it back inside K. Mays for the touchdown. That speed and pursuit of Carolina hurt them on this play as they over-pursued from the inside out. That's a cardinal sin 
for Kay Mays and playing the option, but I'm sure he hasn't had a lot of work on that. Number seven there, the son of a coach. His father is the receivers coach here in Virginia. Will Bryce set to kick off. There were whispers that that guy, number seven, only got a scholarship here because his father was a coach, and it took a long time for him to prove himself. Oh, there's a bad move, too, by Jonathan Lynn. He didn't need to call fair catch on that. He's a running back. I mean, there's nobody within 15 yards of him, so that is going to cost Carolina some field position. Sherman now in the spotlight. And get ready for some noise. If, they, if Chris Keldor thought he had problems before with the noise, just wait on this drive. Let's go down to Dean. Guys, Mac Brown said line checks because of the crowd noise was a problem in the first half. It's twice as loud as it was in the first half at any time. The give is to Leon Johnson. And he is stumped at or behind the line of scrimmage by Ferrier. The clock running with 2.52 to play in the fourth quarter. We're deadlocked at 17. North Carolina came in here ranked number six in the country. Still entertaining hopes of a New Year's Day ball. Second and 13, Keldor. Incomplete for Nay Brown. Clock stopped with 2.29 to play in the fourth. And if Virginia can hold here, Mark, they're going to get some very good field position. You can see Carolina does not want to take too many chances. They've been burned now 95 yards away with an interception for a touchdown. But they get in a situation now where they don't convert. The Cavaliers are going to get the football at about midfield. Could Virginia's clandestine society of seven be working its magic right now? 2.29 to play in the fourth quarter. Listen to this. Barnes complete brought down by Phelan but it's short of the first down they'll have to punt and the clock running with 215 to go in the fourth Carolina and Mac Brown with three timeouts remaining Virginia with two and now we have a timeout on the field Chris Keldorf had it going his way, but not now. We'll be right back. Two eleven to play in the fourth quarter. A look at the respective brain trusts. Matt Brown on the left, George Welch on the right. Fourth and punting situation for DePriest of Carolina, standing on his own seven. He's had four blocked this year. That's Tiki Barber on his own 35. A dangerous return man. They don't come after it. They set up the return. And Barber at the 35. Barber brought down at the 44-yard line. 43-yard punt, eight on the return. Hamilton on the tackle. Well, Virginia doesn't score here. We're going to overtime, and neither of these teams have been in an overtime game this year. The way it works is no sudden death like there is in the pros. Each team gets an equal number of possessions. They start on the opponent's 25-yard line, and they get to move the chains. They get four downs to move the chains or score. The score is tied after the first overtime. Guess what? We do it again. We play it again. And we do it again and again <laughs> until one team finally is ahead. Good field position for Virginia on first and 10 at their own 44. Sherman going up top for Crowell. Who's got it? First down, Virginia. Crowell came up with it. Houdini's in the house. Wow. I'll tell you what, Jermaine Crowell has been denied most of the day. Either Robert Williams or Dre Bly or somebody's knocked the football away from Crowell. This time he makes the catch between Omar Brown and Robert Williams. Number
for 17 and making the catch. Watch him. It's going to be in between two players. Maybe that's what he needs is to go up between two players instead of one. But he goes over Brown, comes down with the reception, and now Virginia can win this football game with a field goal. 137 to play. The back's out of the eye. They give it to the fullback, pounding it straight ahead. Plowing his way down to the 11-yard line is Charles Kirby. But the play of the game so far made by Jermaine Crow. And he goes over Omar Brown. He's 5'10", but he doesn't have the leaping ability that Trey Bly does. And Crowell times his jump beautifully. And just get an idea of the hang time that Crowell had holding on to the football. There was a tie for it, but that goes to the offensive player. Crowell has had four 100-yard games. He's on his way to his fifth if he catches one more pass. He is big time. The back's out of the offset eye on second and six. Sherman falls down in the middle of the field. Yeah, I think that's all he wanted to do is set up Rafael Garcia, who's so accurate, get that football in the middle of the field for his kicker. A look at the updated ACC standings. Florida State perfect at 7-0. North Carolina at 5-1. Virginia could improve to five and three. And North Carolina now has two timeouts remaining after using one here. Yeah, they have to think about how they're going to use their timeouts here. If all Virginia wants to do is play for a field goal here, Carolina has to use its timeouts and keep as much time on the clock as possible. Matt Brown going through that with Kay Mays on the sidelines. What an incredible turn of events, all starting with Antoine Harris on a 95-yard interception return. And man, since then, this football game has been all Virginia. A swing of fortune in Virginia's favor. There's number 16 for Virginia in the background. Rafael Garcia, the 5'11 senior. And a look there, the last seven meetings and the futility of North Carolina. <laughs> and they're going for number seven. Boy, we could just roll sevens at you all day long. It's that secret society. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt you see Mickey Mantle cruising across here right now. But number 16 is the man on the hot seat now. Garcia, the field goal kicker for Virginia. The 5'11 senior, the former exchange student from Spain. Will get his crack momentarily. You know, they're doing, they're just running a safe play here. This is a, a touchdown type play. It's a victory formation. Want to keep the football in the middle of the field. They didn't want to fumble the snap. They didn't want any turnovers. This is very unusual to see that on the play before a field goal attempt. But George Welsh wants to put that football squarely in the middle of the field, let Carolina burn another timeout, and kick the winning field goal. Garcia, John, one of two today. Garcia is the number one score in Virginia history. Third in the nation in field goals. He holds the school record for field goals made. Second in Virginia history in points with 255 coming into the game. He'll have an opportunity on fourth down shortly. And I can remember Garcia as a freshman, John Spagnola. He was still getting acclimated to the nuances of college football in America and you know what he would jump like he just won the game after he kicked an ordinary routine extra point yeah well that's happens he's born in Barcelona Spain as you said came over here as an exchange student and actually played football to meet people and uh, now he's got an opportunity to jump for joy if you thought he jumped a lot in those extra points <laughs> wait you see him jump after he kicks this one here he's 17 for 22 on the year from over 30 yards between 30 and 39, he's 11 for 12. And this is going to be, I guess, about a 32-yarder, 33-yarder. So this is well within his range. He's been very accurate, over 90% from this distance. From 32 yards out, Rafael Garcia for the ball game with 43 seconds to play. Right down the pipe. Virginia leads by three.
39 seconds remain for North Carolina as the curse continues for the Tar Heels. North Carolina and Chris Kelgore came in here hoping to exercise the demons of losses past. They haven't won here since 1981. And Virginia may have some special forces at work. And Mac Brown has a determined look on his face. He can't believe how this game has just become unraveled in this fourth quarter. But there's 39 seconds on the clock. Virginia scored 17 points in the last nine minutes and 23 seconds, Mark. Carolina has to score one with 39 seconds left, or this balloon of a season is going to burst for them. A lot at stake this afternoon for both teams. Will Bryce set to kick off for the Cavaliers. Leon Johnson will get a chance to return this. The natural with a nice return out to the 43-yard line. He broke through that initial wave of tacklers, and Will Bryce, the kicker, made the tackle at the 43. Here's what they're playing for. North Carolina trying to get that at-large alliance bid, and meanwhile, Virginia with a shot at one of the remaining bowls. It'll be the first time Carolina has played in a New Year's Day bowl since 1950. They have 32 seconds to play. Keldor sacked. And that's called another timeout here. And Carolina does, so they use their last timeout on this play, Mark. But, you know, give Virginia credit. They didn't go to a prevent. They didn't sit back on their heels. John Harris comes through and makes the sack. That's the seventh sack today for Virginia. Six of those were in the first half, though, so they're really... You know, here they bring on the big play just when Leon Johnson gets good field position for him. An incredible turn of events. 22 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that play took 10 seconds. They had 32 seconds. Took 10 seconds to get sacked and call a timeout. If you're North Carolina, you would prefer Keldorf to get rid of it and stop the clock early. And he throws it off. Out of bounds. And there's another seven posted prominently on the clock. It is third and 18 with 17 seconds to play. All Carolina can do is I think they have to try to go something deep down the middle of the football field, knowing full well that they can still get some time stopped. If they do get a first down, they have to take some shots deep with this football right now. Third down and long, the flanker screen to L.C. Stevens in heavy traffic brought down. That's near the original line of scrimmage, and that's going to do it. Yeah, they can't get another play off. It's fourth down. It's over. Virginia wins.
John, some final thoughts on this one. Oh, it really God. turned. What an incredible game. You got to give credit to one of the smallest guys on the field. Antoine Harris intercepts a pass, goes 95 yards. At that point, North Carolina was up 14 points, and they were going to add some more to it. There's the winning field goal that put this team ahead by three points with just about 40 seconds left in the game. And I know the sevens were running wild to there. Tim Sherman scores, comes back in the game. And I'm so exhausted, I'm going to go have myself a 7-7. Seven seven. <laughs> like that, too. <laughs> and you think about number 17, Jermaine Crowell, that made that big, big catch in that field goal drive. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, all day long, the secondary was knocking balls away from him and making big plays. Crowell finally came up at the end and made the biggest play of the game. So Virginia today assures itself of another seven win season and somewhere after witnessing this game you've got to believe that there are seven secret society members smiling and watching the scoreboard